asked the question, and we began with the question, who is Jesus Christ? And we noted that many in the world do not have a correct answer. Many proclaim Him as teacher, as politician, and as sage. But few put Him in His proper place as both Lord and God. This is the dividing line to true Christianity. The way we answer the question, who is Jesus Christ, tells us if our faith is pointed in the right direction or if it is not. In our study of Hebrews, we have been examining the first four verses. And I, often, I noted last week that people are often confused about who Jesus is, but the writer of Hebrews was not. And his desire was that we not be The writer of Hebrews proclaims seven aspects of Christ's person that are worthy of our attention and our study in the first four verses. Last week we noted that Jesus is the heir of all things. He is the rightful owner, the lawful one, the one who is the owner of the world. The ownership is His rightful possession because He is the eternal Son of God. This morning as we read we will see and focus on the fact that Jesus is not only the rightful heir of the world, Jesus is the creator of all things. Let us stand and read this passage together. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed the heir of all things, through whom also He created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature, and He upholds the universe by the word of His power. After making purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name He has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Father God, strengthen me now to speak truth. Keep me, O Lord, from error. Help me to walk as I preach this message on a narrow path, not deviating to the right or to the left. Keep me in the very center of Your will. I pray that the hearts be open to the message and that we will see Your Son through whom You created all things. In Jesus' name, Amen. For the theist, that being the person who believes in God, there is one truth that seems to be foundational. God created everything. In fact, this one truth is so foundational to a belief in God, it is the one that the devil has chosen to attack most vehemently in recent years. In schools, in universities, and especially in film and on television, the idea of a created earth is being pushed aside. There's a television show right now called The Big Bang Theory. I don't recommend anyone watch it. It's a rather modern and sort of uh, kind of out there television show. But I, I wanted to mention the fact of this. The show is named after the theory that the worlds, the universes, just happen to come into existence by virtue of a Big Bang. And the problem with that theory is that the, or, uh, the people who originate and propagate such a theory always want us to believe that the bang came from nothing. Out of nothing came everything is what we're told to believe, that from nothing comes something. And I can tell you this, that is the height of stupidity, to believe that anything can come from nothing. If ever in history there was nothing, there would still be nothing. Because nothing comes from nothing. Now that's, that's kind of deep, but it's very simple. 
If ever in history there was nothing, there would still be nothing. That's why we believe God's eternal. Because we believe something had to be eternal. Anyhow, right now, many people in the world believe that the universe just came into being by way of a naturalistic process and that we are simply the result of millions of years of random mutation. Thus, for many people, the belief in a creator has been put aside today and atheism is on the rise in history now more than it has ever been because people feel very justified in their atheism. They feel very justified because that's the intellectual root. It's intellectual to say, I don't believe in God, I believe that nothing caused it all. Yet at the same time, we look at the theist. The person who believes in God. And then we go even further, not only to the theist, but to the person who believes that God has interacted with His creation, that He has spoke, as we have already read in Hebrews, God spoke and that not only did He speak, but that His words have been codified into Scripture, when we get to that, per that place, we realize creation is not a difficult thing at all. Because if you turn to the very first chapter, or the very first book of your Bible, this book that we believe God has given to us, the very first thing it says is, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is where our faith has its foundation. Don't you know that's why the devil is attacking that? Don't you know that's why Satan has chosen that as the place to attack in the 21st century? Is because that is where the foundations lie. If you can get the foundations of creation to crumble, everything else must necessarily fall with it. Our faith has a foundation, and it is in that very first sentence of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We believe God has a plan. Why? Because He created the earth. We believe God is sovereign. Why? Because He created the earth. We believe God is supreme over all. Why? Because He created the earth. We believe God is able to do anything He wants and the way He wants, and He doesn't need our permission to do it. Why? Because He created the earth. It is His. In a sense, if you strip away the act of creation from God and you blame creation on an accident or on a random chance, you strip away God from the picture and you are left in the chasm of agnosticism which leads to the pit of despair which is atheism. But the Bible does not do this to us. The Bible gives us a Creator. The Bible tells us who that Creator is. And it tells us that that Creator created all things, that nothing came about by chance. Everything on the earth has been placed on the earth and is a special creation of a living God. Now, that's an introduction. Because today we're going to go a step further. Because as we consider our belief in God as Creator, as Christians, we also have the responsibility to recognize an even deeper and greater truth. Not only is God the Creator of the universe, but God in essence is a Trinitarian being. And what that means is the nature of God is shared between three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Son, of course, we noted last week is Jesus Christ. He is the heir of all things, the eternal Son of God. And it is appropriate then, because the essence of God is shared between Father, Son, and Spirit, it is appropriate then that we ascribe the act of creation not just to the Father alone, but also to the Son and to the Spirit. The three in one. That will be our focus this morning. That Christ is not a creation of God, but is Himself the Creator of all things. And the part of the passage we're going to focus on is verse 2. If you want to look back at your Bibles, it says in verse 2, But in these last days He has spoken to us through His Son. We talked about that two weeks ago. Whom He appointed heir of all things. We talked about that last week. 
the, the, the words we're going to focus on today, through whom also He created the world. Now I want to begin looking at that passage by comparing it to some other passages that say basically the same thing. Hold your place in Hebrews and turn with me to John chapter 1. John's Gospel, John 1. 